Wow. Gorgeous. Of course, I wouldn't go out with him just because he's handsome. Me neither. Besides, he's got a lousy body. That's so shallow. I'm 17. I'm supposed to be shallow. Well, would you want a guy to go out with you just because you're pretty? You think I'm pretty? Sure. Thank you. You didn't answer my question. No, I wanted to go out with me because he thought I was a great person. Right, so why wouldn't you go out with him? Because he's not a hunk. <laughs> Emma, you're so superficial. What's wrong with liking muscles? Nothing, but what about his inner beauty? That you marry. I'm talking fantasy here. You're right. Let's go find ourselves a couple of hunks. <laughs> Surprise. We just came by to bring you some magazines. Oh, thanks. Guess what? What? I'm getting out of this contraption. Oh, no. I kind of like it. It's sort of like a sadomasochist bed jacket. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Dr. Dr. Mulray. Hi, guys. <laughs> so, how's the surgical site? Oh, smooth as babies. Are you here to examine me? No, I'm here to hide. I just went two rounds with Nurse Krieger. Who won? It was a split decision. I decided to split. Oh, speaking of which, we better go or we're going to miss the movie. What movie? I'm taking the kids to see a revival of a man and a woman. Oh, no, without me? Well, I see we have visitors. Never miss a trick, do you? <laughs> Doctor, you're wanted in surgery. Right, I was just making a few notes on Mrs. McArdle's chart. With a thermometer? <laughs> Where did I leave that pen? Well, I'll be right there. We've all got to go. Visiting hours are over. Movie's almost starting. I never have any fun. Well, we'll take you to the movies on Sunday. What's playing? Ronald Reagan Festival. <laughs> Shall we all see her later? Goodbye, Goodbye Nurse Krieger. I hate these ads for sportswear. Sexy Cheryl waxes up her skis for the long slalom. Sure she does. The only thing this woman ever waxed was her legs. <laughs> and how are you, my saucy little bag of slipped discs? What's this? You'll see. We're gonna watch videos? Yep. Highlights of your favorite operations? Nope. A man and a woman. You rented it? Sure, I thought it might be nice to just uh, sit back and watch a movie tonight. Just you and me? Well, unless you had other plans. No, no, I just don't usually end up in bed on my first date. Uh, I promise I won't try and play doctor. This is really nice of you, but you don't get very much free time. Are you sure that you don't have something to do or somewhere to go to be with someone? No. Now just relax and enjoy the movie. Doctor's orders. Dr. Murray! What is going on here? We're about to watch a movie, and it's rated R, so stick around. We might want a sponge bath later. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Boy, all we need now is some popcorn. Plain or, uh, butter? <laughs> Then she told me she saw him leave all dressed up, smelling of expensive cologne and wearing alligator shoes. And he told Millie he was only going bowling. <laughs> but the day comes when you have to realize that alligator shoes means only one thing. Cocktail waitresses. <laughs> How long has this been going on? Apparently quite a while. It seems there's this cocktail lounge down at the bowling alley. No, no, I mean your roommate. Oh, she came in this morning, first thing, picked up both the phones. You know as much as I do. I have to call Jenny. I don't care if he's my brother. He's no good. <laughs> you think she'll come up for air soon? I don't know. Give her a minute. I've got to tell you about last night. What? John came in and we watched the movie A Man and a Woman. How cute. Yeah, he brought popcorn and everything. Sounds like a date. It was a date. Okay, Millie, what else? <laughs> well, hello. How are my favorite patients, current and former? 
Resting comfortably, doctor? Good. I'm only satisfactory. I have to use the phone, and I think those are going to have to be surgically removed. Did you ever see anyone bowl in alligator shoes? Use the one in my office. It's down the hall. Make a right at the vending machines. And uh, would you bring me back a candy bar? Anything without nuts. Oh, you got it. Thanks. Sleep well? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about breakfast at Tiffany's? Oh, great. I'm starving. No, I mean for tonight's movie. Oh, I think that would be great, but the balcony is occupied. Ah, uh, but you have pull with the projectionist. Mrs. McDevitt is about to be transferred. You can do that? Mrs. McDevitt, your three minutes are up. Uh, We're moving you across the hall. You can do that. <laughs> Dr. Mulray's office. No, but I can get him for you. Oh, yeah, sure. Hold on a sec. Okay, go ahead. Accountant. Canceling. Lunch. Got it. And you are? His wife? His current wife, who he lives with? I, with whom he lives? <laughs> no, I, I'm a candy striper, but I'll make sure he gets the message. <laughs> You had her disconnected? Oh, John had her transferred so we could watch another movie tonight. Wasn't that clever? Clever, yeah. That's one of the words I could think of. I could also think of a couple of others. Is something wrong? I don't know how to say this. What? Does he wear alligator shoes? <laughs> Why? Did he tell you he was married? Married? No. She just called him. I took the message. How did she sound? Trusting. Sorry. I can't believe that. Here's his candy bar. It's full of nuts. <laughs> That's nothing compared to what he's full of. I specifically asked him if he didn't have some place to go to be with someone. What's the matter? You couldn't remember the word married? Allie, you can't ask a man that you are having a casual relationship with, even though it looks like it might be going in a not-so-casual direction, if he's married. Who can't? I can. Shut up and eat. <laughs> it's showtime. Oh, John, gee, I'm really not in the mood for a movie right now. I'm really engrossed in this magazine. The hospital supply catalog? <laughs> Come on, I brought Cracker Jacks. Could we talk for a second? Sure. Let's talk. Are you married? Let's not talk. Okay, let's not talk. <laughs> Look, Kate, I, I didn't tell you I was married because I, I don't feel married anymore. Do you have a license? Yeah. Then you're married. Yeah, but that's not married, and not in the way I want to be. We were married once, but now we just live together. And we talk about, about separating, about divorce, about seeing other people. But mostly we just sit in that apartment waiting for it to go co-op so we can buy it and sell it and split the money. <laughs> you should have told me. Why? There are no vacancies in the building. <laughs> little joke. Very little joke. I was going to tell you. When? I don't know. You, you just don't say to someone with whom you're having a casual relationship. I mean, even if you hope it's going in a not-so-casual direction, that you're, <laughs> that you're married. I can't go along with that. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm new at this. Incompetence is no excuse, especially for a doctor. Kate, if anything is going on between us, and I sincerely hope there is, no one is cheating and no one is getting hurt. Now, what do you say? I rent at high noon. What happened to breakfast at Tiffany's? I couldn't find a hat to go with it. <laughs> so what do you say? Shall we watch a little Gary Cooper? Yup. Out. Out, damn spot out, I say. <laughs> Stay. Uh, 
Hello? Allie, you're not going to believe what happened tonight. They mistook Nurse Krieger for a patient and removed her tongue. <laughs> not that good. John came over and we watched High Noon. He wore a cowboy hat. Where was his wife? Back at the ranch? <laughs> we talked about that. He said that it's not a real marriage. It's been over for a long time. What did you expect him to say? I'm happily married. Move over, please. <laughs> Allie, marriages fall apart all the time. Remember, yours did, mine did. It sounds as if you want me to say it's okay for you to go out with him, even though your common sense tells you not to. Have I ever told you how much I hate talking to you? What are friends for? <laughs> what, what do you think I should do? Get a new doctor? Keep the doctor, lose the cowboy. You're right. Hello? No, Mrs. McDevitt's gone. What? No, wait, 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 I didn't mean that. <laughs> Lunch time. Yeah, bye. Are we in the mood for duck a la Oh, we sure are. Only this isn't it. I didn't say it was. I merely asked if we were in the mood. <laughs> it's a little hospital humor. We are not amused. No, no, no. We mustn't let being in traction affect our funny bone. Enjoy. Morning, Nurse Krieger. Afternoon, Dr. Mulray. Hi, beautiful. How's the back? Better. Uh, you mind if I have your orange juice? I haven't had breakfast yet. Sure. What have you been doing all morning? Running around. Jogging? Moving. What? Barbara and I talked last night, and I moved into a hotel this morning. What? I mean, so fast. Well, I told you we both knew it was coming. Uh, this didn't have anything to do with me, did it? It had everything to do with you. Doctor, you're wanted in 307. Mrs. Leonard's elbow was draining. Be right there. Be back as soon as I can. Wow, my heart's pounding. His heart's pounding, her elbow's draining, and my conscience is killing me. <laughs> Don't get up. It's just us. Where have you guys been? I've been phoning you all afternoon. At school, at the supermarket, at the post office, at the drugstore, at the accountant. Move over. Allie, I have to talk to you. About what? <laughs> About... The movie that we saw? What movie? The guy in the alligator shoes. Are you on medication? <laughs> the Western movie, remember you said he shouldn't ride off with somebody else's cattle while his wife was still at home? I have no idea what... Oh, the cowboy with the white jacket. Right. You're not going to believe what happened in the sequel. He left the ranch. Be closer to the school norm? I haven't seen that part yet. Alligator boots. Cowboys don't wear shoes. Or white jackets. Are you sure it wasn't the town doctor? You know, I think I've seen this movie before. No, no, you haven't. It ends very unhappily. He breaks the school marm's heart. She gets hooked on rot gut. She ends up in some godforsaken mining town, drinking from a bottle and doing favors for unwashed gentlemen. Want to know what I think of this movie? No. Would you go to the waiting room for five minutes, please? Why? Because I can't go to the laundry room to be alone. <laughs> He left his wife? He left his wife. Boy, that was quick. He's only known you a couple of weeks. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm your greatest fan, but what have you got that the rest of us haven't? <laughs> Trouble. So what are you going to do? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm not going to see him anymore. What do you mean, you guess? Well, I don't know what the right answer is. I do. It's choice number one. No. Use a sharp pencil and fill in the circle completely. Ellie, this is not my SATs. This is my life we're talking about. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you see any similarity between you, him, and his wife, and me, Charles, and Claire? We're going for a little ride, Mrs. McArdle. 
Where to, Nurse Krieger? The x-ray room. Again? Why don't you just stick me in the microwave and be done with it? <laughs> Mr. X-ray is our friend, Mrs. McCardle. He shines his special light and lets us see all those filthy things festering inside us. <laughs> is that from the nurse's manual or is that your own personal philosophy? <laughs> Did Dr. Mulray say why I need another x-ray? I'm sure he has his reasons. Is there something wrong with me that I don't know about? I prefer not to lower our talk to a personal level. <laughs> we will be with you shortly, Mrs. McCardle. Hi. Hi. I don't know why, but I always have the feeling that that woman has pictures of me doing something I don't remember. Uh <laughs> Are we ready to proceed? With what? Okay. I've been reviewing your case history very carefully, and it occurs to me that a crucial part of your treatment might have been ignored. What's that? A decent dinner. You like? I like. Tarzan happy. <laughs> what? What, what? Why are you smiling like I just gave you a shot? No, am I? Trust me, I give lots of shots, that's the look. John, I, I think that we should talk. Okay, what about? Well, I don't know exactly, but I, I have a feeling we're going to figure it out as we go along. I just feel that... Uh... Is the cafeteria closed for repairs, Dr. Mulvey? <laughs> Mrs. McArdle and I were just discussing her case. Is there something I can do for you? I know it sounds silly, but I thought we might be allowed to use the x-ray machine. Why, what's the problem? Mrs. McDevitt seems to have injured her shoulder. I think you might know her. She's one of your patients, too. <laughs> How'd she hurt herself? She fell out of bed, reaching for the phone. <laughs> All right, bring her down and take Mrs. McArdle back to her room. I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll pick it up on the way home. Thanks. Bye-bye. We'll just park you here for the nonce, Mrs. McArdle. Did you tell him no? I didn't tell him anything. I didn't get a chance to. Why? Were you forcibly restrained? No, I was forcibly interrupted. Allie, he brought me the most beautiful dinner. So do the waiters at Lutece, but you don't have to go out with them. <laughs> you know this guy's in no position to start a relationship. Allie, I don't know anything except here's a terrific guy and he wants me. And whether he's on the rebound or not, I just know there aren't that many terrific guys out there. And he may be the last one who wants me. And maybe they won't raise taxes. <laughs> I think that you're the wrong person to talk to about this. Why? Because you've got me mixed up with Claire. Well, there are certain similarities. That's not fair. Charles was married to you at the time. So was John until he met you. Are you calling me a Claire? I'm not calling you anything. All I am saying is that... Never mind. This is not your problem. It's my problem. And I think I'll just go solve it myself. Will you just listen to me for one second? Will you let go of my wheelchair? Not until you listen to me. I've heard enough already. Nobody calls me a Claire and gets away with it. Well, then stop acting like a Claire. <laughs> Why should I? You're happy without Charles. She's happy with him. That's not the point. You're going to get hurt. Until the dust settles, this guy doesn't know what he wants. Allie. Claire, it's... I mean, Kate. Thanks. I think I'll just go wait outside the x-ray room. John? Present. So, what happened with Mrs. McDevitt? Well, it was just a bruise, so I gave her some ice. And, and... sent her packing. You took the awful joke right out of my mouth. <laughs> so, you were saying... Yes, I was, wasn't I? What were you saying? Well, what I was going to say was, um... Well, what I meant to say was... Listen, while you're trying to remember that, let me say something. I've been doing a lot of thinking. You have? Yeah. And I thought, you know, I should move out of that hotel. I mean, that's no place to live. Oh, well, where were you thinking of going? I thought maybe I'd get a little sublet in the village. The village? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a neighborhood in Manhattan. I know. I live there. <laughs> well, what do you know? 
Now, really, it'd be perfect, wouldn't it? What, what's wrong? I'm getting this funny feeling. What kind of funny feeling? Well, it's kind of a scary funny feeling, like maybe I should be apologizing to Allie right now. I don't understand. I think maybe I do, finally. Look, maybe I can explain it in your frame of reference, okay? You are suffering from what we specialists refer to as a slipped commitment, complicated by multiple fractures of the marriage. This often results in a buildup of unhealthy amounts of despair and fear of loneliness, typically concentrating here. The ascending colon? Oh. I thought that was the heart. No. No, the heart's up higher. Anyway, the point is that uh, most people recuperating from this condition are frequently dependent on crutches. But eventually they find out that those crutches are no longer needed and without giving it too much thought, they just toss them away. And there sit those crutches all by themselves, feeling awful and eating too much chocolate. <laughs> Take it, you're the crutches. Yeah. Well, in that same frame of reference, I would like a second opinion. I'm afraid that is my second opinion. I'm afraid that's my last opinion. Can I call you? Sure. When? When you no longer want to be the boy next door. This usually calls for a graceful exit, but I don't think I can handle it all by myself. What are you doing? Eating. When I'm upset, I eat. The nurse brought it in after you left. What is it? I don't know. Looks like liver, but I'm not sure whose. <laughs> I told John that I didn't want to see him. I know. How do you know? You don't look happy enough to have done the wrong thing. <laughs> Mrs. Lowell, visiting hours ended 15 minutes ago. If you do not vacate this room immediately, we shall be forced to take steps. Nurse Krieger? If you do not vacate this room immediately, Mr. Wheelchair and I will be forced to put tire tracks up and down your back. Just when you think there's no one around who's caring, along comes a friend who offers a hand in sharing. The things start looking fine Sometimes tears and sorrow Are all the things you've got and Just when you think You're all by yourself You're not Of course, I wouldn't go out with him just because he's handsome. Me neither. Sorry, it's kind of lousy body. That's so shallow. I'm 17. I'm supposed to be shallow. Well, would you want a guy to go out with you just because you're pretty? You think I'm pretty? Sure. Thank you. You didn't answer my question. No, I wanted to go out with me because he thought I was a great person. Right, so why wouldn't you go out with him? Because he's not a hunk. <laughs> Emma, you're so superficial. What's wrong with liking muscles? Nothing, but what about his inner beauty? That you marry. I'm talking fantasy here. You're right. Let's go find ourselves a couple of hunks. <laughs> Radiology, please. Dr. Warner. Thank you. 
<laughs> Heads below the knees, feet back around the shoulders, legs tucked behind the <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hi, guys. This is a surprise. We just came by to bring you some magazines. Oh, thanks. Guess what? What? I'm getting out of this contraption. Oh, no. I kind of like it. It's sort of like a sadomasochist bed jacket. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hi, Dr. Dr. Mulray. Hi, guys. <laughs> So, how's the surgical site? Oh, smooth as babies. Are you here to examine me? No, I'm here to hide. I just went two rounds with Nurse Krieger. Who won? It was a split decision. I decided to split. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, we better go or we're gonna miss the movie. What movie? I'm taking the kids to see a revival of a man and a woman. Oh, no, without me? Well, I see we have visitors. Never miss a trick, do you? <laughs> Doctor, you're wanted in surgery. Right, I was just making a few notes on Mrs. McArdle's chart. With a thermometer? <laughs> Where did I leave that pen? Well, I'll be right back. We've all got to go. Visiting hours are over. Movie's almost starting. I never have any fun. Well, we'll take you to the movies on Sunday. What's playing? Ronald Reagan Festival. <laughs> Shall we all see her later? Goodbye, Goodbye Nurse Krieger. <laughs> Dr. Hansen? Dr. Hansen, report to have... I hate these ads for sportswear. Sexy Cheryl waxes up her skis for the long slalom. Sure she does. The only thing this woman ever waxed was her legs. <laughs> And how are you, my saucy little bag of slipped discs? What's this? You'll see. We're gonna watch videos? Yep. Highlights of your favorite operations? Nope. A man and a woman. You rented it? Sure, I thought it might be nice to just uh, sit back and watch a movie tonight. Just you and me? Well, unless you had other plans. No, no, I just don't usually end up in bed on my first date. Uh, I promise I won't try and play doctor. This is really nice of you, but you don't get very much free time. Are you sure that you don't have something to do or somewhere to go to be with someone? No. Now just relax and enjoy the movie. Doctor's orders. Doctor Moe! What is going on here? We're about to watch a movie, and it's rated R, so stick around. We might want a sponge bath later. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Boy, all we need now is some popcorn. Plain or, uh, butter? <laughs> then she told me she saw him leave all dressed up, smelling of expensive cologne and wearing alligator shoes, and he told Millie he was only going bowling. <laughs> But the day comes when you have to realize that alligator shoes means only one thing. Cocktail waitresses! <laughs> How long has this been going on? Apparently quite a while. It seems there's this cocktail lounge down at the bowling alley. No, no, I mean your roommate. Oh, she came in this morning, first thing, picked up both the phones. You know as much as I do. I have to call Jenny. I don't care if he's my brother. He's no good. <laughs> you think she'll come up for air soon? I don't know. Give her a minute. I've got to tell you about last night. What? John came in and we watched the movie A Man and a Woman. How cute. Yeah, he brought popcorn and everything. Sounds like a date. It was a date. Okay, Millie, what else? <laughs> well, hello. How are my favorite patients, current and former? Resting comfortably, doctor. Good. I'm only satisfactory. I have to use the phone, and I think those are going to have to be surgically removed. Did you ever see anyone bowl in alligator shoes? Use the one in my office. It's down the hall, make a right at the vending machines. And uh, would you bring me back a candy bar, anything without nuts? Oh, you got it. Thanks. Sleep well? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about breakfast at Tiffany's? Oh, great. I'm starving. No, I mean for tonight's movie. Oh, I think that would be great, but the balcony is occupied. Uh, but you have pull with the projectionist. Mrs. McDevitt is about to be transferred. You can do that? Mrs. McDevitt, your three minutes are up. We're moving you across the hall. You can do that. Please report to obstetrics, please. Dr. 
Dr. Mulray's office. No, but I can get him for you. Oh, yeah, sure. Hold on a sec. Okay, go ahead. Accountant. Canceling. Lunch. Got it. And you are? His wife? His current wife, who he lives with? I, with whom he lives? No, I, I'm a candy striper, but I'll make sure he gets the message. <laughs> You had her disconnected? Oh, John had her transferred so we could watch another movie tonight. Wasn't that clever? Clever, yeah. That's one of the words I could think of. I could also think of a couple of others. Is something wrong? I don't know how to say this. What? Does he wear alligator shoes? <laughs> <laughs> 